neurological adaptations are pretty limited. They happen fast. Mm -hmm. And are these people that hold, that have tremendous relative strength, are they just genetic freaks then? Yeah. Yeah, they that. They, you don't walk into the gym and take your, as I explained Friday night, you don't take your vertical from 22 to 38. Yeah. That doesn't occur. Right? One of the silliest things that I ever saw associated with CrossFit was this, uh, oh, I don't even remember that guy's name. He was up in Seattle that wrote some kind of a... Uh, standards table for, for uh, all the fundamental for, movements or for the? fundamental movements and and uh, you know exercise testing prescription and he said that a, a beginner had a 12 inch vertical jump and oh, an right. intermediate oh, had an 18 inch vertical right. jump and, a, and an advanced lifter had a had a 24 to 36 inch vertical jump and then an elite athlete had a 30 Two inch vertical jump, and it's like he actually said <laughs> that you could develop that. That. Right. <sighs> That's amazing. Did you say you agree? I said that'd be great. That would be, it would great. be great. It would be great. You know, the only problem with that is it doesn't occur. <laughs> <laughs> we used to tell this story in the usually like the six o'clock lecture, but the, the Bulgarians before communism fell would pick their athletes by going into the schools oh. and when the kids were 10 and have them do box jumps. Of course, a little kid doesn't really know how to do a vertical jump, so the easiest way to do that is just make the kids. And just they just have a competition in class in like the fifth grade of who could jump on the highest box. And if the kids were exceptional, they pulled them out of that school and put them in state-sponsored school and made them an app, made them Olympic weightlifter. They went to the, well, they went right? to the, the, the and sports the, school. That sports and school. They, and then they determined at the, at That's the right. sports school what you'd be good at, yeah, if you, where your aptitudes were, right. and they just funneled you into the program yeah. where you would do the best. Because you were athletic. If you go to a kindergarten class right now and you take the kid that jumps the highest, that's, that same kid jumps the highest when he's 18. You can't do that at 12, 13, 14, because some kids hit puberty early. But at 6, 7, 10, whoever jumps the highest in class at 6, 7, and 10 is the kid that jumps the highest at 18. It's the kid that jumps the highest at 21. Because the those traits athlete. are genetic. Genetic. Right. So genetic. So the guy that deadlifts three or four times his body weight, that's a guy that had a higher vertical jump than No. Body. Not always. Not always. No. Not always. The guy that, that, that has a... 36 inch vertical yeah. is the guy with the genetics. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I meant. Or deadlifts 500 the first time he ever right. deadlifts. Right. right. Who will, and, and he will also have a big vertical. Of course. Yeah. Um, but, like I'm saying, you can't necessarily train that because you, the deadlifting a ton or whatever, lifting a lot compared to your body weight because you have to. Pretty soon you have to get bigger and bigger to get stronger. Sure. So, so I'm saying is that, is there a genetic component to that? Someone who has the... To total the, ultimate uh, strength? No, relative strength. Someone who can... Eh. No, you're, you're talking, you said total ultimate strength, but by a little person. Like yeah. a, a, a 150 no, pound guy who's playing like 600 100, is a genetic, yeah. is a genetic anomaly. Or not anomaly, but it, uh, he's on... Like he's ultimately, on, what, are we, what do we care about force production? We actually don't care what you weigh. Right? So, like, if you're 170 and you deadlift 500, which is a pretty good deadlift for a guy who weighs 170, or you weigh 260 and you deadlift 800, yeah. that guy's stronger. Yeah. Right? So, like, I get it. Maybe the 170 guy wins out on Wilkes formula or body weight or whatever. Yeah, I don't, that's all. We don't care. Because <clears throat> what we're trying to do is increase force production. The, the only time that counts is in weight class sports. Yeah. The only time it counts. But... If you got a guy that walks in the gym when he's 15 and he's got a 36 inch vertical, that guy is an explosive genetic freak and he will also be stronger than everybody else who also walked in the gym that same day. Yep. Right? So he's got potential to ultimately be a lot stronger and be a freak athlete. Yep. He didn't earn that, he was born with it. Yep. Right? But if you take a guy of average strength who trains consistently for 15 years, he can get very, very, very strong, sure. even in the absence 
of a bunch of explosive capacity. Yeah. What is what's Chase's vertical? He goes at Chase. Twenty four. So you know, get Chase. Those. Are, yeah, he's not. He's not a. Freak. He's not a freak. He's totally. He's just normal. been training since he was twelve. <laughs> and, he's, and he's twenty. Amazing. So he's got eight years, right? Amazing. And the guy's squatting six fifty and deadlifting close to seven, and pressing three thirty, three fifty, three fit three thirty five, whatever it is. I I intentionally try to fuck up his program and it doesn't work because <laughs> <laughs> he shows up. He doesn't he doesn't miss training. Yeah. Well, yeah. Try this, Chase. Right. He goes and does it, and it fucking works. <laughs> Just pull shit out of my ass. <laughs> Twelve thousand calories. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anybody eat more in my life than Chase. We went to a, a restaurant in Wichita Falls. This is so awesome. <laughs> and he ordered. This was after a seminar or something. He ordered. Yeah. He ordered the family size shepherd's pie. Yeah. Which came in a trough. It was a it was a nine it was a nine by thirteen pan. Yeah, it was a cake pan. A cake pan of shepherd's pie. But it was deep pie. too. It was, like, yeah, it was deep. deep. At Chase. that place we ate at, the, that, at down, down by the old building that used to be the bank that you went up in the through the pump. Oh, you're talking about the Highlander. the Highland. The Highlander. Oh, yeah. So anyway, Chase eats this whole thing, and he's like just shoveling. He's eating the ser- <laughs> he's using a serving spoon to eat it. <laughs> eats the whole thing, and then uh, and then at, at some point, my wife is like, "Is is that good?" He's like, "No, it's not that good." <laughs> <laughs> he eats the whole thing, and then he's done. The whole plate is empty, and then, and then Rip hands him his like spinach salad. Yeah. And he's like, "Chase, eat this," and he eats he's that like, too. He like he sighed. He didn't want to eat it. He was like. And then he ate it. So the manager came out and gave him like what did he give him? Fifty percent off. He only charged him. He was so impressed that the guy ate a family size. It's like a five spine. person portion. How tall is he? How much does he weigh? He's six six one maybe. Yeah, I think he's taller. Than six, me. One, six one, two close. He weighs two forty eight. Yeah, he's still thirty pounds underweight. He's a type one diabetic. Yeah, that's true. Oh yeah. He's a type one diabetic. Has been since his little kid. There's an insulin pump on all the time. Yeah. Mm. Which is kind of like cheating, I understand. But <laughs> I'm sure you'd probably pump. not trade type one diabetes for a 350 press. But in fact, <laughs> you know, you might. <laughs> Some of us tomorrow. <laughs> Firstborn child, go to hell. Sure. 350. I'm in. <laughs> Sure. Ed Cohn's got a replaced hip, still squatting up to seven. I think it's easier to. Our experience has been it's easier to lift on a replaced joint than a destroyed joint that needs, a, that needs, joint that needs to be replaced. With, right. Yeah. With the exception maybe being a shoulder replacement, those are tough. Those Jesus. aren't worth a damn. I've never yes. done. I've never it's trained. Shitty on surgery. That. that sounds terrible. It's bad. It's shoulder bad. prosthesis is just to keep you from this. being uh, keep you from being awake all night. That's all it's for. Right. But you're crippled if you got a shoulder replacement. You don't want to let that happen. It's bad. Yeah. You got a rotator cuff problem. Get it fixed before it chews your shoulder up. Because you don't want a shoulder replacement. But knees and hips, we train them all the time. Yeah. Sure. Really? All the time? All the time. No shit. Percentage of everybody's Every practice is those guys. Yeah. And there's more and more of them. Yeah. And the surgery is better and better. Yep. And I tell people all the time, I don't, I, the doctor told me I needed to wait 15 years and become an old, frail man before yeah. he would. But it, and not train and get out of shape and fat because he was afraid that if he did my hip replacement that it would have to be redone in 20 years. Come on. God almighty. What, the man, you're 48. You're still young enough to actually get something accomplished, right? But you need a fake hip. Get the hip so you can train. He's asking you to wait till you're 65? What happens between now and then? Nothing good, right? So we always encourage people get it fixed, so you can train. Well, I know one argument. What I feel convicted by the Holy Spirit right now. Right. Because you're going. It's going to go up. So when you're 60 and you need it replaced, well, dude, I've been squatting. Right. Yeah. Mm. I can tell you that 
tell at the initial when I initially started talking with you, you didn't think that's where I was going with it. No, I I I, I know what they tell them. Right. I know what they tell them. And for about nine reasons, you need to go ahead and get it replaced. Right. You'll have a better outcome three months from now at 48 if you're training than 15 years from now if you're not training in the interim. Yeah, it's just, it's, that's a no-brainer. Just get it done. I mean, there's guys in big cities that do four of those a day. It's routine surgery. It's not even considered terribly invasive anymore. They're so good at it. I'd have a buddy of mine that's a surgeon that, that is down to 43 minutes on a hip. God. Uh, I, don't want, I don't want that guy. Yeah. He's, I'm trying to break he, records he him, for how fast I can him. replace a hip. He can do them drunk. Slow it down, brother. <laughs> he can do them <laughs> when he's drunk. And he knows. Wow. <laughs> he's got dad on doing them drunk. <laughs> So, hip replacement. <laughs>